Hello friends, I'm Andre, product designer and co-founder of DeepWorks Studio, which is a fully distributed product design and innovation studio. In 2016, Jake Knapp and John Zaraski released a book called Sprint, which is a super structured process for product innovation and product release. Since the release of the book at AJ and Smart, we iterated on the process to make it into the Design Sprint 2.0. Since 2017, I tried to port it into a remote environment and run these Design Sprints 2.0 only remotely. And now I have developed it and iterated it into something that I call the Hyper Sprint, which is kind of the most efficient, most time-saving and most mentally performative version of the Sprint as it can work now. Today, I'm going to share with you the template for the Hyper Sprint and just describe briefly how to use it. So it's very, very easy to follow. So you can run your own Hyper Sprints wherever you are with whatever team you have. Let's get into it. Okay, now let me go through the entire board step by step. This might take a little longer because I'll describe to you every single step and what's important to know about it. So session one is about brainstorming challenges, setting the goal and doing some research. You'll start off with the expert interview or how might we session, which is described in a sprint book a little bit later on, but I do it in the early beginning to get the team aligned on all the challenges. The way it runs is basically an open conversation in a video call and you ask the decider or the product owner to basically lay out all the challenges that they have and that they see and let everybody contribute. Now, while someone is talking and describing these challenges, Everybody else, and you need to make sure that really everybody else does it, will write down notes in the how might we format. How might we is a Procter & Gamble exercise. Basically, if someone speaks out a challenge or says something like, we need a better website, you don't write down, we need a better website, but you rather rephrase it into something more solvable that sounds like, how might we create a better website? And that's something that later on is super useful because then you can already brainstorm really good solutions. So this is the expert interview. You spend 30 minutes talking and writing things down. You will then categorize them in several categories that you can write on yourself. And basically what you end up with is with something like this. It's going to take like 10 minutes maybe. Always time box things. Don't forget that. And once you're categorized, Give everybody four dots and the decider gets five dots and let them vote on them. So you have something like this where people basically put dots on the things that they find important or interesting or worth working on. Once you have those, you basically arrange them in a prioritized tree. It's just a visualization of all the challenges. The most voted one goes on the top so you can see what's really, really important and then it kind of gets less and less important. I normally leave out the one dots because they are sometimes so many that it's not worth copying them over. What's worth remembering here is that every idea that gets voted in will be part of the whole process. Nothing will be left out. It is, this is just a prioritization so you can get moving faster. The next frame is about brainstorming the long-term goal and the sprint questions. This exercise is super simple. You basically give everybody a chance to write out what they think the whole concept or product will look like in two years and let them write a sentence that's as interesting as possible. Then you share those, read them out, and then you give everybody one vote. The decider gets two votes. The winning ones get either merged up or just if it's just one, you just move them into the next frame. Same goes for sprint questions. Everybody writes down three questions that they think would be along the way on reaching that long-term goal, and then you vote on them. So basically give everybody two votes, the decider gets three votes. And again, same thing, either merge them into the three most relevant questions or just copy them over if it's very obvious. The next part is a preparation for the map exercise. It's not been laid out in the book, but it's quite simple. You basically let everybody brainstorm a story that they think the users will go through when using the product. Now it's important to mention here that there's two options. If the product already exists, then you basically try and lay out the user story, the main user story that's already existing and give everybody the chance on, to write one story on six post-its. If the product doesn't exist yet, you want to create a new user journey, something that hadn't existed before. So let everybody come up with a new story in six different steps. Once that's done, you basically give everybody two votes. One vote, you vote on the actual story, which is represented by the letter and the other vote on a post-it. 
The decider gets three and they can basically vote on whatever they think makes, makes sense. Once that's done, you merge them together into one story. This is the perfect preparation for the map exercise because then you can transfer them over into the next section. And it kind of looks like this. Basically, you start off with the user, the target audience, or the different target segments. And then you write the goal. And then step by step, you create the journey, basically leaning on what you've brainstormed in the session before. Next step is about research. You basically just take screenshots and do some online research on what's relevant for solving the problems that you've stated on or reaching the long-term goal or answering the sprint questions. What's important to note here is that you don't have to refer to the same industry that you would normally do this project in. So you can really go wild and brainstorm new ideas, draw and steal ideas from completely different places. After you're done, you exchange and learn together. And that's it for day one. One more thing I would like to add here is that I usually add a break between the goal and sprint and the starting the map and journey, which is takes about 15 to 30 minutes, depending on how much time you have. This guarantees that everybody is mentally as sharp as possible and doesn't lose a lot of time. Day two is about creating individual concepts, voting on them and deciding what you want to move forward and prototype. It's actually quite simple. So you basically do the same thing as uh, as in the sprint book. The only difference that I did here is I left out the second step. So you basically do 20 minutes on only note taking and sketching already. Then you do some crazy eights exercise, which is really great. And then you draw the main concept. What I really like doing during this phase is putting on music so that people feel focused and sharp while they're actually doing stuff. You basically let them draw on paper and then take pictures of the finished concepts upload them into Miro, and you can use the little circles to vote on the individual bits of the, of the pictures. That makes it really easy to see a heat map. I then do a 30 minute break and carry on with the next exercise. The next exercise is basically the preparation for the storyboard. And it's the same thing that you've done in the session before, which is the map, except this time you're not coming up with a map, but you're actually referring to a, a user journey from the winning concept. And then the third day or the session is about merging all the ideas. And I do that normally in a three step process. So at first I would basically create an outline and what are the most important pieces of content that need to go in each individual frame. Then I take half an hour break. Then I go into more refined, like trying to piece the content together, trying to get the details in. And then the third phase after a break is just about really polishing it and making it look really nice and making sure that every detail is there. Each phase, by the way, takes about 15 minutes, five, zero. Try to time that because the, try to time it because the amount of time you take for this exercise is also always the amount of time it will take. That's it on a very basic level. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me at Andre with EJ at the end at deepwork.studio or add me on LinkedIn or Instagram. Have a nice day and see you soon.